Hello and welcome to the Year 11, what would have been the information evening and uh, we thank you for engaging in this process. We understand it's difficult at the moment um, and unable to bring parents in isn't ideal but uh, hopefully this will give you a flavour of what's going to be happening throughout the rest of the Year 11 um, and how we're going to uh, navigate the circumstances that we're currently in and hopefully get ourselves through to the exams in the summer. But instead of me telling you why Year 11 might be important, I'm going to leave that to Dr Daniel Evans, who last year did a video for us for our YouTube channel. Ignition sequence start. All engines are running. We have taken tremendous steps. We choose to go to the moon before this dictator's out. We have achieved the earth-shaking, the breathtaking, the groundbreaking, and left a mark in the heavens. Our successes build one upon another and amplify what is possible. The dawn of Orion. It's time we take the next great leap. Hi there, students of Four Year River Academy. My name is Dr. Daniel Evans. I'm a Foy boy and I'm extremely proud of my Cornish heritage. I also attended your school although I left a very long time ago, almost 25 years ago, in the summer of 1996. It's been a fun ride since then. When I was 25, I decided I wanted to move to America, and I've been living here for the past 15 years. I've worked at the highest levels of the United States government by serving for the president in the White House, and I'm currently a senior leader for NASA's entire suite of science programs. So anytime you see missions to other planets or to the sun or looking at distant galaxies and stars with our incredibly powerful telescopes, then do please remember that FOI students can do things that they didn't think they were capable of doing. You know, I wasn't the super smartest student in the world and I didn't come from a wealthy family or anything like that, but I made up for it with hard work and a sense of grit and determination. And honestly, that's what it really takes, perseverance, and also a willingness to introduce yourself to people and to make connections. And it's that sense of perseverance that's carrying you, the students of FOI, through an extremely uncertain time during this pandemic. Uh, my daughter has been in virtual school uh, since last March, so I really know the difficulties you all face right now. But just remember, persevere. So if any of you want to get into touch with me, then do feel free to send me an email. If you have any questions about career paths or anything you'd like to discuss about space, then I've left my email below. And I really do wish you all the best. Excellent. And there's some real key messages there, especially one of perseverance. And as we go through times such as we've had over the last 18 months, Perseverance is especially key in order to try and achieve some success as we head through year 11. So the purpose of this is I want to share with you some of the things that we think that you need to know and also some of the questions that have come through over the last week as I've requested questions and hopefully to answer some of those. So to look at why year 11 import is important and I think Dr Daniel Evans helped to show how year 11 can be important and some of the journeys that we can go on in, in order to get to places like NASA. We'll also talk about the mock exams and revision, the post-mock intervention, what we do with the results and how we then use that to guide and help the students. Exam arrangements, and at the moment we, we kind of know what they're going to be, but that might change in the future as they did last year. Looking at post-16 next steps and also looking at some of the key contact details. So why is year 11 important? We're not all just money driven, but it has been found, a study from 2015 has shown that stu should students achieve their five subjects with grade four and above, including English and maths, there is a high, high probability that they will go on to do better for themselves financially throughout the course of their lives. If that then goes on to a level three qualification, again, the financial implications are vast. So it's very important that we make the most of this opportunity so we set the students up best for life. That doesn't mean that achieving those things will automatically lead to that and also if you don't achieve that it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll lose out on that. It would just be a lot harder in life in order to meet the same expectations. 
In terms of the mock exams, the mock exam timetable was sent out earlier this week and we are now ready and set up for the start date which is Monday the 8th of November. The end date which is Wednesday the 17th of November, remembering that Monday the 15th of November is a staff training day. As I said, that timetable has been sent to students. They've had that earlier in the week and you are able to find a copy of that on the school website in the exam section. The link is on the PowerPoint. We will send the PowerPoint out so that you can access the links or you can just copy that address into the web browser. In terms of revision, revision should now start to happen for those mock exams. We have an excellent resource in school and we're going to make sure that all the students next week are signed into GCSE pod. Many of them did it in the summer. Um, whilst they were off, it was one of the tasks that they were given before the summer holidays. They can just use their Google, their school Google account. Um, there is a button on the GCSE pod website which enables them to log in using all of their school details. So it's very, very easy to sign in. One of the reasons that we sign, in for GC, uh, sign up for GCSE pod is because it removes the need to be buying revision guides. Um, I know that some questions have already come through about which exam boards and which revision guides do I need to buy. All of the subjects on GCSE pod already have the relevant exam board set up. So all the content on there is relevant to what the exam board is going to be setting come the summer. So there is no need to spend those extra money on revision guides. Of course, if you want to help and support your child in that way, then please feel free to do so. We like GCSE pod because there's lots of interactive videos, lots of tasks and exam style questions. So rather than just sitting and reading a book and making notes, there are things that they can watch. It's great uh, to have it on their phones as an app um, and they can use it on, the, and students have used it on the way to school and the way from school on the bus um, so that they don't lose that travel time. It also leads to students being able to be interactive and active with their revision um, and also teachers can set tasks on there as well and we will be training staff in order to do that effectively. The other great thing about GCSE pod is that we can monitor the amount of time that they're spending on GCSE pod looking at videos in different subjects. Another great thing that we can access are leaderboards uh, and we will be holding some competitions throughout the course of the year to see who are the most engaged in GCSE pod. In terms of what happens after the, uh, the mocks, we have our post mock intervention strategy and our program. We offer support and we will be offering support for after school sessions in English and maths and other subjects will be able to do extra lessons during lunch times. And we will put that on a timetable system so that no student feels like they're conflicted and subjects don't feel or students don't feel like lots of different subjects are after their time and their attentions all at the same time. This year is as much about the well-being and the care of the students as it is about helping them to succeed. So for those sessions, we will target the students. We'll make sure that they're short blocks of three to four weeks so they're not constantly losing lunch times or after school time either. And it won't be all the students all the time, but we will keep you informed of when your child will be required and what times they will be required. So some key dates to so that you can plan the rest of the calendar for year 11. So as I've already mentioned, we've got the mocks starting on the 8th of November. The report that comes with that, um, which will tell you the results of those and then any predicted grades will come out on the 2nd of December. There will then be a parents evening the following week in which you'll be able to chat to your, chat to your child's teachers with regards to what that report looks like. And that will be on the 7th of December. We then have a second round of mocks on the 28th of February and the report for that will come out on the 24th of March. It may be at that time that we decide to have another parents' evening, which will focus on tar targeted students that we are looking to kind of boost their progress and make sure they meet the, uh, meet the targets that they've been set. Monday the 9th of May is the start of the external examinations as it currently stands. And we ask that the students be available until the 30th of June so if you're booking holidays, please bear that in mind, as at the moment we don't quite know yet when all the exams are, but we will release that to you as soon as we do know. So on to exam, exam arrangements. The consultation between Ofqual and the government has, has finished and they have said that they are going to be doing exams in the summer and that it will not be teacher assessed grades. They have, however, added a caveat that teacher assessed grades will be used if exams were to be cancelled. 
Unfortunately, we have no control over those circumstances. This is not a school decision. We can't decide as a school which ones we're going to examine and which ones we're going to do teacher assessed grades on. That's something that comes from the government, comes from Ofqual, and we are then led by them. So at the moment, the plan is for external exams in that May and June period. However, they have added that should they decide that they are going to cancel the exams, it will be teacher assessed grades. That's another reason why we're trying to make sure that the mocks are treated as importantly as possible because that will help to contribute any teacher assessed grades if that's where, the route that we have to go down. Several people have asked about what the content will be and that the content will be, whether the content will be restricted. The answer to that is yes, it will be in some subjects. So subjects such as English and history, they will be having some units removed from that. There are other subjects that we do such as sports studies and music, which are a more coursework based, but they will also have modules modified to meet the fact that the students have missed eight or have had disrupted learning over the last 18 months. The decision on the content will be made by the exam boards. We will keep students updated and we will also keep you updated as parents. And I'm going to put together a, a fact sheet that will identify who the exam boards are and what content is going to be omitted from those and also the topics that students will be following. The next thing that we need to think about is post-16 next steps. Now I know that Mrs McCarty, our CGS manager for year 11, has started to have conversation and organise things for students already. At the moment we're in the college open day phase, so I know that Cornwall College had uh, an open evening for FOI students on Tuesday over at their St Austell campus and other colleges will be having open days if they have already, haven't already had them. Applications for this process are starting to be open and they tend to close sometime around the February time um, so that we can uh, assist and aid the students with that. If you have any questions or queries about the application process or would like some help and support, then Mrs McCarty is excellent at, uh, at helping students through this process and we'll do a lot of follow up and chasing up of the students in order to make sure that every student has got an application submitted by Easter. We're also working with some outside support agencies. So it might be that your child gets to work with one of these uh, support agencies and then they will guide and some of them guide them through right from the very first moment that they're going to try and choose their college course all the way through to exam day where they will be there or they'll be here when the students are opening the results to, to help and advise. Some of the routes that the students might want to think about, apprenticeships, A-levels, BTECs, OCR nationals, and then for those students that may or may not get their uh, grade fours, then there are lots and lots of level one and level two vocational qualifications out there in things like construction, engineering, motor mechanics, all very relevant, very useful skills that students can go into that will then provide them with a career for the rest of their lives. So just moving on to the contact details and future information. So myself, head of the college for year 11, focusing mainly on the progress. There's my email address. There's Mr. Randall, head of year, who I know many of you are used to contacting as well. Mrs. McCarty, who, uh, who tends to make a lot of phone calls home and will have spoken to many of you as well. So all three of us are available. There are email addresses on the screen. Please don't hesitate to contact us and uh, one of us will get back to you as soon as we possibly can, hopefully with the correct answer. If not, we'll consult with someone and then provide you with the information you require. It's our hope that we will be able to provide you with an update every two weeks as to how Year 11 is going, um, some just general information about what's coming up. Um, that's when we provide you a lot of information with regards to the college, and college uh, open days and the post-16 progress. And then, as I mentioned before, we're going to provide you with a list of exam boards. And once we know what the modified content will be, what we will put that together with the exam boards so that you can see that for every subject. Just going to leave you with one final thought from Michelle Obama about what she wished she knew 20 years ago and how this might help the students. Thank you very much for listening. Any questions, please email into the school and we'll try our best to answer them. Thank you. Who are you going to be? And if you'll notice, I'm not asking what are you going to do, but who are you going to be? I'm asking you about how you plan to live your life every day. How are you going to respond when you don't get that job you had your heart set on? For all of you who are going to be teachers, what are you going to do 
if the students in your class next year just don't respond to your lessons? For all of you going into business, how will you react when your boss gives you a goal that feels way too high? See, these are the moments that define us. Not the day you get the promotion, not the day you win Teacher of the Year, but the times that force you to claw and scratch and fight just to get through the day. The moments when you get knocked down and you're wondering whether it's even worth it to get back up. See, those are the times when you've got to ask yourself, who am I gonna be? And I wanna be clear, this isn't just some vague platitude about building character. In recent years, we've actually been seeing a growing body of research that shows that skills like resilience and conscientiousness can be just as important to your success as your test scores or even your IQ. For instance, West Point cadets who scored high on things like grit and determination were more likely to complete basic training than those who ranked high on things like class rank, SAT scores, and physical fitness. So what we're seeing is that if you're willing to dig deep, if you're willing to pick yourself up when you fall, if you're willing to work and work until your weaknesses become your strengths, then you'll develop a set of skills that you can mold and apply to any situation you encounter, any job you might have, any crisis you might confront. But you gotta make that choice. And let me just share just a little secret before I end. As someone who has hired and managed hundreds of young people over the course of my career, whether it was during my time as a lawyer, as an administrator, as a university, a nonprofit manager, even now as first lady, I have never once asked someone I was interviewing to explain a test score or a grade in a class, never. I have never once made a hire just because someone went to an Ivy League school instead of a state school, never. What I have looked for is what kind of person you are. Are you a hard worker? Are you reliable? Are you open to other viewpoints? Have you stepped outside of your own self-interest to serve others? Have you found a way to serve our country, whether in uniform or in your community? Again and again, I have seen that those are the qualities that I want on my team, because those are the qualities that move our businesses and schools and our entire country forward. And, and, and just understand this, those are the qualities that you all already embody. They're the values you learned from your parents, from the communities you grew up in. And today, more than ever before, that's what the world needs.